I'm a little bit of an introvert and I want to get more into masterminds. Jump in. <laughs> Jump in. Jump in. You've got to do it. Like right. You can't just say, I want to do this and then not make any steps to doing it. No disrespect, I don't know who the person is, yeah. but you're talking shit. They have lost 18,000 keywords in the top three sections. The two massive parasites yes. uh, for Parasite SEO. I uh, think they've been manipulated big time. If you didn't have that data and you went on stage and the stuff you was talking about, you didn't believe it in and you couldn't defend yourself, I'd be worried for you. Kazra Dash is an international SEO speaker and has become the go-to man for website recovery, successfully ranking in the hardest industries in the world. And then there's James Dooley. James ranks websites in the casino niche and has been credited for generating over 1 million leads for business owners in various niches. Together, they combine as the joint force of the DDD podcast, sharing business knowledge, personal growth techniques, and their general life experiences with the world. I feel like we need to probably start off by why we've called it the DDD podcast, because I put up a status saying if anybody guesses it right, they'll win a prize, and literally nobody guessed it right. Or actually, one person guessed somewhat of it correctly but why have we called it that what does it stand for i don't even know what it stands for uh dooley and dash digital nope dooley and dash oh. dash and dooley debates dash and dooley debates yes or maybe it could be dooley and dash debates dooley and dash debates no, it needs to be Dash and Dooley debates. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right. Anyway, now that we've got it out of the way, why have we called it that? Because Dooley and Dash are going to have some debates. Yeah, very true. If anybody that doesn't know us, we enjoy debating. Whether yeah. it's politics, whether it's SEO, whether it's business, everything. To be fair, we always play devil's advocate on stuff. So mainly within SEO, because um, there's so many different nuances within SEO. There's so many different ways to skin a cat. So for that reason, we try to play devil's advocate is what we always say is, yeah, but what happens if this happens? And then what if this situation was to be the case, then what would you do in that situation and stuff like that? So yeah. um, we call it a debate, but it's a constructive criticism at times. Yeah, it's, do you know what? I typically find it where we'll be debating something and you'll be saying, that way i'll be saying this way and it's usually somewhere in the middle as yeah, well exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we essentially both get educated whenever we have these constructed debates exactly. so um why are we doing a podcast that, that's probably the next question i think there's plenty of reasons why i think um personal branding is becoming more and more important especially now ai's um taking off uh previously i've always tried to build brands and hide behind the brand so to speak and be a silent kind of investor but nowadays with regards like i said with ai you need that bit of personality you need that um personal edge on certain things plus it's a massive trust signal we've started to realize there's a lot of companies that want me to invest in their company and we do very very well in, within business but they want to make certain that the way we are setting certain things up is we're doing it with trust, honest, integrity. I think that's very, very important because these times people have been going for two, three decades in the business and when we're coming in as a 30, 40, 50% shareholder, they want to make certain that they can trust us. And I think being able for them to be able to see who we are and what we do, hopefully quite a lot of these podcasts will rub off on people to be like, actually, yeah, I, I get on with these. I think these are actually sound people to be able to work with. Yeah, I think the, the main reason why I really wanted to do a podcast is there's a lot of digital marketing podcasts or like a lot of niche podcasts where you'll listen to them and it's like all right it's great for information but there's not that much personality behind the person and I feel like we both have quite decent personalities not to not to blow smoke well, up part my of the debate I'd say you do <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah um but yeah I feel like long form content we can essentially like explain our personalities a little bit more like potential business partners would be like all oh, right kaz is the funny one Dooley's the boring one but cool. um yeah i think <laughs> um I, th I think it'll be really interesting to see how the podcast grows yeah for sure um so 
going on to a little bit of SEO talk, algorithm updates. We've obviously seen a lot of websites being hit. It's been quite a few algorithm updates as well. It's not a single algorithm update that's happened. Um, there's, there's a core algorithm update and there's their helpful um, content algorithm update that's happened within the stretch of a week. Uh, it's too early to say at the moment. I mean, I don't like people going out sharing videos and putting stuff out there of what the algorithm update is. There's so many different factors that come into play. Google nowadays don't just dial the tone on links yeah, or even just on content. There's normally a rolling of 15, 20 different things that they've changed. So it's, it's hard to properly unfold what is and isn't working, um, but Obviously, that's our jobs to try and do it. And if, so, if sites have been hit, we have to try and recover them if we can. I've got a few different stats for you. I know that you're a stats person, so you'll like this. I love stats, yeah. So there's been a big shift in the last two weeks on user-generated content, UGC. Reddit has gained 3 million keywords and the top three keywords, so you've obviously got the top fives so overall, yeah, yeah, top yeah. threes, is 96,300 increase. Quora has increased by 1.5 million overall, and it has increased by 49,200 in the top three. What's your thoughts on that? Well, you've just, you've only just given me the stats, so um, you're putting me right on it there now. The, um, I would say that it's mainly a, a fight against AI, if I'm being honest. Yeah. I think that they want to, at least when you've got places like Reddit and Quora and places like that, you knowing that it's real people that are coming back and forth with information where there's so many different systems now that people are doing with scaling mass AI generated content mm -hmm. that like we just said earlier on people want a bit of personality they want to see different people's opinions they want to have the devil's advocate of this is the best no this is the best no this is the best as opposed to one article that says here's our top 10 list and they sort it by the one that pays the highest affiliate commission yeah. They've got they've got massive issues with SEOs manipulating the search the search engine now, where majority of people are writing reviews and it is set by order of who pays the highest. So I feel it is a bit of a combat against that. Um, I'm not surprised why some of those user generated kind of websites have started to grow. Um, I probably do similar. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's different though because like informational terms, it's good for debate. I would say versus type keywords where you're having different voices being able to give their opinions on stuff. Yeah, definitely. Do you think that we'll see a return in the comment sections of websites? Very good question. No. Right, okay. However, I might eat my words by saying no, but <laughs> it's hard to say. I'd say no, because the comments can end up taking up 75% of the content on the page and you've got to think of the cost of retrieval mm -hmm. of Google to scrape, read, understand still what the page is about. People could do comment spam, which then can completely skew what that page is about. Still got to make certain that it reads and indexes all that content and then evaluates what that content is about. And if 75% of the page is irrelevant content or some just people just debating back and forth with yes and no answers and stuff like that. Mm. I don't I don't feel it's the future, if I'm being honest, but Reddit and Quora are growing, so maybe it is, but I don't know. It's it's it, the cost of retrieval I think is very important for Google. Yeah. N now more and more pages of it in the internet, it's they've got to be looking at how much is it costing them to be able to read, analyze and index. Yeah, definitely. There's um there's a guy that I was speaking to in Vegas, actually, and he had this like massive SOP for setting up aged Reddit accounts. And he has like an e-commerce store. I don't know what the industry was, but let's say it was, I don't know, CBD. What he would do is go onto sub forums of CBD related subreddits and stuff and say, hey, does anybody know where to buy this? And he would reply to it with another Reddit account and it would essentially like get loads of customers through to his uh, e-commerce platform. Yeah. So I reckon potentially there's a, a way to manipulate Reddit as well. There's, there's a, a yeah. way to manipulate anything really, but I feel like if Reddit, LinkedIn, Quora and stuff like that, obviously they've jumped up massively recently. There's definitely a way to manipulate it. For sure. Um, 
So away from the winners, we have got Outlook India. So everyone will probably know those guys. They have lost 18,000 keywords in the top three sections and an overall of 167,000 keywords from the SERP. News Direct, 21,000 in the top three section and over 300,000 keywords overall from the SERP. What do you think? The two massive parasites yes. uh, for Parasite SEO, uh, I think they've been manipulated big time. I think mm. the issue with quite a lot of people that who are using those platforms I just quickly write in the article and hitting it with some tier two links and then moving on to the next article. The articles are not great. I think they've got a, a lot of issues with content cannibalization. Yeah. Because if I go and create an article for best casino sites, then tomorrow somebody else will go and create another article for best casino sites. So how does Google choose which one to rank? If there's two, if there's two pages and they're both written well, a lot of time cannibalization kind of pulls them both down. Pulls them both down, yeah. yeah. So, I think there's issues with that internally within the website. I think the content quality is not as good. I think there's certain Forbes actually. People sometimes talk badly of places like Forbes, but for Forbes editorial practices, they're one of the hardest to get over to be able to get an article done because of the editorial practices that they have. So they make certain the content is quality. On Outlook and you can almost post anything. Yeah. So I can see why certain clusters have gone down. I mean, what I would like to say though, as well, is actually, if you look at the, de the stats on that, I have looked at the data on that. So I'm ready for that question, so to speak, is that in the last eight months, it's gone up in traffic still. It's dropped in the last few months for sure. Since this update's dropped it, but it's not dropped it back prior to where it was six, eight months ago. Yeah. So it's still doing well, still ranking for a lot of keywords. Yes, it's dropped for a lot, but it's still a great parasite SEO for people to, go in, create an article on high DR site and leverage that power of that domain to be able to one pass page rank through to you, but also pass traffic through to you and rank for key terms that you want to be ranking for on Google if you've not got the authority on your site. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel like Outlook India got a lot of hate on Twitter and stuff like that. People slandering it saying, oh, I don't know why it's ranking for my main keyword and it's, like, obviously, you've seen my presentation on it. It does have a lot of EAT signals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, It has the correct offers. All the offers have knowledge panels, or most of the ones that I checked, they, they do anyway. So there's a lot of stuff that they're doing right. And I, fe I feel like that's probably why it's still ranking for a lot of keywords. Even though it's lost a lot of keywords, what was it? 300,000 overall, 21,000 in the top three. It's yeah. lost a lot, but it's also still... Yeah, it's, still, as well. it's still getting a lot of traffic, so it's still a great site to be there. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what's your thoughts on Parasite SEO? Do you recommend people doing it? Um, yeah, why not? Um, just like saying, do you recommend people to earn money? If you get an article, a well-written article, Yeah. so whether you're using Market Moves, Surfer, Phrase, OnPage.ai, whatever tool you want to use for content optimization, get the right entities on the page, write a good quality piece, that's on the topic that you want to matches the search intent, probably get some tier two back links. Try if you can to get one or two internal links through to that page and then try to share it online in social media, like maybe you signal by and get some traffic yeah. through to it. Then yeah, why not? Like it, it ranks, still ranks for big terms. If you can rank it for big terms and it can send that traffic through to you, either your affiliate links or through to your website then, why not leverage Parasite SEO? Yeah, I think it's a, a good digital marketing method. That you yeah. can do. It's only like doing billboard advertising. You go and get a billboard that you don't own and you go and put your advertisement on that billboard. You're just doing a billboard on somebody else's site like you're doing, a, like you're doing the advertisement on somebody else's billboard. You're renting that space out and you've paid them for it and it generates traffic and it gives users, as long as you write a decent article that meets the, meets the intent, Google's ranking it because it's a well-written article that matches the intent of that search. And then, yeah, if you can earn commission out of it, then why why wouldn't you want to do something like that? Yeah, definitely. Like I said this recently, I think it was on the ODYS podcast. I said, you ideally want to have your actual main website ranking number one, and then your parasite ranking number two or vice versa. And then when the parasites do drop, if they, if they end up dropping off, 
then you've still got your actual asset there as well that's earning you money. So you're essentially earning double double whammy. Yeah, it's double bubble, huh? Yeah. So for anybody that has been hit, do you recommend anything? I recommend several things, to be fair. I think everyone's got to look as a holistic approach with SEO. Yeah. Technically, first and foremost, run a screaming frog audit. Make certain that your site is first and foremost indexable and crawlable, and it's not something your developers done something crazy on the site. So fix all the 404s, fix all the double 301s, fix it, like try and make it that it's as quick as it can be and just technically build it as best it can be from a technical standpoint. Then check all the content, make certain that if there's any pages that aren't getting traffic, do you need that on your site? Topical authority is not what, people talk about topical authority, but really it's that what they're talking about is topical coverage. Topical authority is when you've got a lot of articles that get traffic on that topic. Yeah. People forget that very important part. If you've got lots of pages on a topic, but none of them get traffic, you do not have topical authority. You've got topical coverage. It's two completely different things. So check that, do content pruning if you're not ranking or improve the pages if it's not ranking. Yeah. Check your backlink profile. Have you got any toxic links going in, in there? If you have, do the disavow. Um, it's laughable at times people say disavows don't work. Obviously, this is one of the debates um, that not specifically that me and you have now because we sat on data. I, 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 can, I can understand why a lot of people say disavows don't work because they're not needed for a lot of industries. They're not needed for a lot of websites. Google does well at ignoring a lot of problematic or toxic links of what people think are problematic and toxic links, GSA blasts, web web two spam and stuff like that. They're good at ignoring bad links, but some of these guest posts and niche edits are like so toxic and unbelievable. I think you ran a couple of tests the other, the other month and it was like, sent 14 backlinks through to, uh, was it 14 or 12 or something? Yeah, it was 14 backlinks through to three different websites so it's like between 14 and like 20 some websites needed more in some cases we found that the page would drop in some cases we found that the silo would drop and in some cases we would find the entire site drops depending yeah. on the size of the, uh, of the website depending on how many foundational trust trustworthy links that the websites have yeah. it was a massive factor but these links are aren't like your gsa blast they're not like the um, what, what's the it was one? funny. It was funny really because the fourteen links that you did when I looked at them, on the face of it, I would have bought them. Yeah, I I, I so said the exact DR62, same thing. DR sixty two, DR sixty eight, upward like that, trajectory, high traffic, still getting links. The no, outbound link to inbound link ratio wasn't no, too bad. No right for us pages. They weren't linking out to porn, CBD, um, upward trajectory. What else? Like it, it was like at face value. But yeah, I'll have that. Yeah, thanks your website. It's only when you start, I mean, don't get me wrong, when you start to look into it a bit deeper, you start to go, all right, I get it. Mm -hmm. If I sent that on Twitter saying, this is a to toxic domain. You would get a lot of flack. <laughs> yeah, but you'd also get some people that reverse engineer to understanding why. Yeah. And you'd go, okay, yeah, I can see. I mean, it was linking out to CBD, casino, and all different types of sites. That doesn't mean it's toxic, but it, it becomes, if it's linking to a lot of porn and CBD and, thing, and th those sites have been hit, you start becoming closer to a bad link neighborhood and, yeah. and then you start going, oh, I, I can kind of see why you wouldn't want a link on that site. But in general, the parameters put in place would be, I need it high DR, I need it not linking out to anywhere. And it's just like, you just won't be able to, but you would stop buying links or even, even acquiring links. You'd just be like, yeah, it's just bizarre at times. But I'd, I'd check the disavows anyway. I'd get a specialist company to do a disavow. I'd do the content pruning. I'd check the technical side. Um, and then I'd check any content gaps. Yeah. Um, I'd check any pages. So there's a, there's a great tool called seotesting.com. Guy called Nick Swan. Um, he's a very, very cool guy. He's, his tool is amazing where it allows you to do a lot of split tests. Um, you get your website, load it in, you look in the last seven days of the winners and the losers, whether it's for queries or for pages. And then you can start seeing what areas of the site have started to drop because it might only be a couple of pages have dropped and it looks like, oh my God, that site's been decimated and it's it's literally two pages that's dropped. Yeah. And you might look into it and go, okay, I can see now the intent, there's been a slight intent shift for these keywords. I might need to come, like reword what's going on. So the, um, 
yeah, I'd, I'd check a lot of different things. I'd use SEO testing to check what's going on. And then I think that's the main parameters that I'd look at. Have you I think um, one thing that I would say is with the rise of ChatGPT, with the rise of all these mass AI writing tools, a lot of people are mass producing content and they're not going back in and re-optimizing them. So yeah. like the best running shoes 12 months ago ain't the best running shoes now. So that's going to be become super important. I reckon the next AI SaaS, if anyone's listening, we will invest if you create this. Hmm. If you can create a tool that goes in and re-optimizes your content based off of what's missing on the page, looking at Google Search Console, that, that's going to be an absolute killer. To be honest with you, you say that and on page that AI and Surf is doing it now. Are they? Yeah. Right, okay. Um, we've been testing it quite a bit actually. So right. the, um, how good it is, I don't know. It's still in with the R and D team. Right. But they've got it where they can set up and they can have it rewritten. So you, you give them the article, you give them the keyword, and they'll in their in your existing article they would rewrite it and work in the main entities that's missing off the page, and work it in. What it wouldn't do is add extra H twos that might be missing. Right. Okay. So what you probably want to do is get your editor to go in add one or two H2s or questions that might be missing for that intent, but then go and load it into Surfer or on page. Those two tools are amazing. Like they, um, they're so good for obviously extracting NLP entities that needs to be on the page. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I, it's with R and D testing. So I don't know how good it is at the moment, but we'll get the feedback. Yeah. Maybe and... Michal or Lushan, if you're listening or Eric, we want to invest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Get us on that investor board. Right. So on other new news, Craig Campbell has launched his new marketplace. So a few facts about it. It's called onlinebusinessflippers.com. If anyone wants to check out, it's actually a really nice looking website as well. I was quickly looking at it a few days ago. Um, so here's some stats on it. 15% of anything less than 100K that's what they take. Anything more than 100K, they take 10%. Listings are being vetted, every single one, um, and they are also free to get listed as well. So obviously you list your website if you are wanting to sell your website and they will vet it before it goes out to the marketplace. And they are focusing on smaller websites as well, which is quite interesting. I think... Craig is a great SEO. I think his network that he's got is a great SEO. Yeah. I think that he actually gets a little bit of flack um, for some people saying, that, oh, Craig's just on the speaker circuit. He doesn't do any testing. He doesn't build any of his own sites. He just makes money doing speaking and selling services and stuff like that. But actually, if you actually get one-to-one -one time with Craig, he's very advanced, right? So, and he's got so much test data from we, from what we share with him as well. But he, he brings a lot of test data as well to it. So he, he gives me connections where he'll say, oh my God, let's say it's Chris Parr has been doing X, Y, and Z. And then we, it gives us information to start testing certain things. Like it could be uh, Mike Pace has been doing this in the US. He's been working really well. Why don't you try it in the UK? Um, he, he, he's a lot more advanced than what people think. A lot more advanced. He, he's got a lot, the, the, kind of network that he's got now for buyers and investors. So if someone goes and puts their website on his domain marketplace, he's got a massive network of people that probably would want to buy it. So yeah. I would certainly, I mean, I'm a, a hoarder. I like keeping all of my assets and I make it certain that I love the MRR, I love monthly recurring revenue. So I don't really like selling unless it's a ridiculous number. Mm. I think at the moment digital assets are being sold at two or three years worth of profits. Unless that was seven or eight years worth of profits, I wouldn't bother selling because yeah. It, why would I sell it? Like it, you, you buy into digital real estate and you're making six, seven percent yield, right? So that's like 18 years worth of, 18 years before you get your money back. So why would I sell it three, four years when, and then put it into real estate, which is 18 years yeah, before I get my it money makes, back? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. So I, I double down on my digital assets and I keep all of them. Yeah. Um, so, but, but if I was to sell, I'd 100% one of the first people I'd go to is, um, either Empire Flippers or to Craig's. Yeah. The um, uh, FE International's got as well on the bigger on the bigger kind of websites. There's, there's Flipper as well, right? Yeah, but 
I mean, they don't do they. Uh, so Flipper own... don't really vet too much. So right. like, I think Craig's got a very good vetting team put in place to make certain that each and every domain that gets put on his marketplace is going to be not spammed. It's not going to be manipulated in any way, shape, or form, like to the nth degree of. Um, the, the, someone, the minute someone buys it, cause it's going to make him look bad. If someone goes and buys the domain and a week after it's tanked, it's going to yeah. make him look bad. But he um, he also gets quite a lot of criticism. But like, I've seen I've seen his growth and his journey and his, his success from maybe 10,000 subscribers to over 120, 130,000 subscribers on YouTube. And the love that he gives for other people in the industry, like I've seen him pick up people off the streets and give them jobs. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he, he, he's got a massive heart. And some people see the the joke inside of Craig, which is, is funny. He's a funny guy and stuff like that. But they don't see actually how big his heart is. And he's, yeah. and he's genuinely is a great guy. Um, a lot of the stuff that he touches does do well. He doesn't talk publicly about a lot of his affiliate sites. Mm -hmm. He's got quite a few affiliate sites that he dumped put his name to that he's crushing it and doing really well. And so many people say to me, yeah, but how, how many sites has Craig ranked in his life? And I'm like, you know, he's ranked a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Like, and the persona of him just going around on speaking circuits, he's just, he's just not. I think, um, I think a lot of people see Craig, and they see the tattoos, and they they might be a bit intimidated. Yeah. At first, but if you actually go out and speak to him, and you, he will literally share anything. Like yeah. if 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 you go to him and say, "Oh, I've heard this," he's like, "No, don't do that. Do this. This will work better." Like, there, there's been so many times where he's myth busted people's theories right there and on the spot. And then he's not just myth busted, but he's actually pointing them in the right direction. There's yeah. there's a lot of people in, in the SEO industry that'll be like, nah, don't do that. It's like, all right, well, what do I do? It's like, they just don't give you an answer. Whereas yeah, Craig yeah. will actually give you an answer. And they'll back it up with data and stats. So yeah. I've tried it here, here and here. <clears throat> so there's not just like myth busting and just trying to share misinformation. He's got information out there. That yeah. And, he's and one of the guys that I go to when Algorithm Update comes along. He's one of the guys I go to because he's got a lot of data. He's got a big network of people. There's, there's maybe one of a dozen people that I'd go to. Um, some of the some of the SEO influencers out there probably haven't ranked a site in their yeah. life. And but he, that's by the by. He's one of the people that I would go to for information to say what's your thoughts on this. So yeah, I think I think he'll do really well with it. I think the marketplace will grow. I like his vetting process and I think he'll have quite a lot of sellers. So I think if people do have demands, that they'll be, he'll be able to move on pretty quickly. Yes. So that website is onlinebusinessflippers.com if anyone wants to check it out. So I've got one SEO question and then we're done with SEO. We'll move on to something a little bit more interesting. So this was a question. I won't mention the name, but basically what was said was, I'm a little bit of an introvert and I want to get more into masterminds. What's your tips on that? Jump in. <laughs> Jump in. Jump in. You gotta do it. Like right. you can't just say, I want to do this and then not make any steps to doing it. No disrespect, I don't know who the person is. Yeah. But you're talking shit. If you wanna do it, do it, right? You've got to dive in, you've got to jump in the deep end and do it, right? Otherwise you're just talking the talk and not walking the walk, right? You have to go in and not just say stuff that you, you're just a sayer, not a doer, yeah. right? The, you've got, I mean, not only that, it's like Davo Rosser at Lion's Hill, right? One of the biggest introverts you'll ever meet. Look at him now, he's going round on the national stage talking on big stages in front of thousands of people. Everyone goes, oh, he's so confident. It's not when you meet him, he's a, he's a massive introvert. Matt Diggity will tell you, he's an introvert. At his core, he's an introvert. Mm. Look at him on stage, he looks like an absolute monster. He's like, I know this, and he's dead confident in his persona. How? Because he's worked really, really, really hard at doing it. You speak to Davo Ross about how he did it. He just threw himself in and kept doing it. And you just got to keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, and you become more confident. And the more confident you become, like, even just go to, I would say, go to a local meetup. When you go to a local meetup, go back to it. Go to a different meetup. Just keep going to the meetups until you're confident enough to go into a mastermind. You, you don't need to go into you won't even get invited to a high level mastermind to start with unless you know what you're talking about yeah so like yeah, yeah you can't be a leech and just go in and sit there and say nothing mm -hmm. a mastermind's all about give and take you've got to provide value otherwise you won't get invited again so if you really 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 want to do it and you're an introvert you've got to work on your weakness which is being an introvert and get out there and speak to people and do it like there's no other way there's no books there's no other else you've just got to physically go and do it yeah 
Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. I I agree. Like, there's. I feel like the SEO industry is a bit weird at times because there are a lot of people that are a little bit introverted, and it, you just need to essentially what you said, throw yourself in the deep end, and just take the bull by its horns. Really, yeah. like for for example, the first time I ever met you, I was pretty introverted. Whereas if you see me now at a, a conference or a mastermind, I'm the guy that's going around asking everyone like, oh, how are you doing? Not seen you for two weeks. Like, so yeah. None of that, I think it's confident. I think a lot of it comes down to confidence. Like, and not only that is actually, you've still got to understand to know what you're talking about. So if you're going into a mastermind about advanced SEO strategies and you're not an advanced SEO, that's not a good idea. So when I say jump, jump in, and you find try, your say, level. Find your level, right? But if you're going to try to apply for Chad My SEO Mastermind, you're not getting in. Mm -hmm. So I run I run the groups for the Chad My Mastermind, right? I sit down with Matt. We've got 500 applications. So unless you unless we know that you're going to provide value, why are we going to let you into that Mastermind? So many people are kicking up. Oh, why am I so? It's people for the jobs and all. And just like. No, mate, it's just like you've got to be, be, we've got to make certain that the other people in this group, in the groups that we're providing, are going to get value from you being in there. Not you're just going to sit there for a full day and listen to everyone and not provide value back. That's not what a mastermind's about. Yeah. It's about levelling up and everyone being elevated. So at that point, you, you just keep going to meet ups, improving your knowledge, and then from there then, just keep slowly but surely building up. But you've got to start somewhere and... The whole saying you're an introvert is just an excuse. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you said, I, I, two of the biggest people on my, on on the stage is like Davo Rosso and Matt Dixit, most massive introverts. Matt, Matt less of them. But Davo Rosso, if you meet him in person, he's a, he's a big introvert. He's a dead nice guy. Yeah. But he'll openly say he's an introvert, and you get him on stage, and he's one of the most confident SEOs you'll ever see. Yeah, I, I've I, I've never met Daryl Rosso, and I've never met Matt Dixit in person. But those two are the guys that I very first started watching youtube videos so it's, it's weird that you mentioned both their names now so away from seo it was your 23rd 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 birthday 23rd birthday looking good for 23 anna <laughs> <laughs> what's um what's one thing that stands out from that mallorca trip that we done so for anybody that doesn't know it was his 23rd birthday two weeks ago and we went to Mallorca for a week. What, what's one thing that stood out? One thing, to be fair, it's not really one thing that stands out. Like, I, I enjoy going out and having a good time with the lads. Yeah. But then I quite enjoy getting up, even even when you're on holiday, doing a bit, a couple of hours worth of work, so you're not coming back to a, a load of work and a load of hassle. So doing a couple of hours worth of work, then going out doing maybe bike riding, golfing, and then having a swim or whatever, going onto the beach, and then of the night, yeah, having a few drinks and having some nice food. So, the um, I liked it that Adam flew over from America, I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. And we turned it into his stag. Yeah. Stug, stug, stug. Um, that was that was a funny day. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Um, I think the when we went out on the jet skis. Oh yeah, that was class. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, I enjoy going out on the jet. I enjoy being out on the water because that's a place where I can switch off. Like, if I have another drink and I'm going to laugh with the lads, I switch off. If I'm out on the water, you know, I, used, I used to have a jet ski and a speedboat and go out on the water there, it just allows you to switch off. And, and Mallorca's a great place, got loads of nice coves and nice little beaches and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's pretty cool to, yeah. to go out there and just have a bit of a ride around. So. That was, uh, th yeah, that was the first time I've ever been on a jet ski and best day ever. Yeah, it's Best good. day ever. So, um, one thing that was quite interesting about Mallorca is that it was all business partners. Do you realise that? Yeah. Did, not, not all my business partners, but yeah, there was all business partners. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know if you saw the status on my Instagram post. Did you not see it? No, so it was um, work-life balance and then a big red X. Oh, right, Work-life yeah, yeah. integration, a big tick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's like, one thing that a lot of people wanted to know is like how you pick your business partners and like what what's the thought process there so do you know what like when i'm in a lot of the masterminds people don't really ask me any questions about seo believe it or not like it's mainly about business and mindset yeah and two of the biggest questions that i get asked is about how how do you enjoy the journey 
when it's a struggle with regards to the amount of work, working hours that you need to put in. And then, how do I choose my business partners? And I'm like, because it's all merged into one. And they're like, oh, I don't know what you mean, I don't know what you mean. I'm like, people see this um, idea of having a work-life balance, but in our industry, it's different for certain industries. You can't do it in certain industries, right? But in our industry, within the SEO industry, you can have the laptop lifestyle. So as long as you've got a laptop and you've got a Wi-Fi connection, you can work anywhere in the world, right? And you can choose who you work with, right? So there's that much, like the growth of SEO is incredible and digital assets and the internet is ridiculous growth. So the amount of work that there is out there, it's not like you're just fixed into a, a warehouse and you've got to work nine till five. At that point, I get a work-life balance Finish at five o'clock, go home, see the family, go and do some nice things, go out with a weekend with the lads, go on holiday a couple of times a year. That's fine. But with SEO, the work-life integration is choosing your partners, your business partners, that you'll enjoy the journey with. Yeah. So that means that you enjoy work. I, I actually get up. If some, I've said this to you before. If someone said a billion pound, never work another day in your life, I'd say, no chance, I'm not signing it. I'm not doing it. I do enjoy it. There's times, don't get me wrong, there's times, it, I'm not saying, it's, I've never used the word stressful, but like, it's times it can be difficult in certain situations. An algorithm update comes and the site drops slightly and you've got to try and uncover it. But then on the next breath, is it's a challenge. So it's enjoyable. So you're like, yes! Yeah. What's yeah, this yeah. problem? Right, okay. But you've got to train the brain. Otherwise, your brain can you be a bitch. Mm. You've got to train your brain to embrace criticism, embrace failure. And when something happens that goes bad, that you just go, I'm going to turn this into a positive. So my biggest reason of choosing my business partners is, have they got that mindset? Are they able to embrace failure, embrace criticism, get themselves out of the comfort zone, but also enjoy themselves? Because they don't enjoy themselves. They're now going to be a burden on me. Mm -hmm. They're going to be that, they're going to be ringing me up, moaning, like, and if I'm spending a lot of time with them, they're going to bring me down. I yeah, don't want yeah. people that are going to bring me down. So don't get me wrong, they still need to have some something. They've got to bring something to the table from, not saying intelligence, but like some angle that they're going to bring to the table that might be a bit of a weakness of mine. So they might be good at technical or if it's, let's say, they've got a team for link building or they've got an established business already and I just need to leverage that business and I'll help them with quality control to improve what they've got within the business. They might be good with, might be like a cultural architect to keeping other staff happy. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just a, a, I'm not just looking at someone going, he's the most intelligent person in this community. I'm going to be business partners with him because we might clash. Yeah. Might be two positives. So it it's mainly to do with the personality and the mindset and that they're willing to like work hard. For this to for this venture for us to work, and if they are, it will work. Fact. Yeah. Because definitely. you you've you've said a few times growth is not linear. So on the downs, can we go? How do we get it back up and be happy about it, as opposed to oh, I'm not happy about this? Nothing worse than when when you do have a dip, your business partner being all depressed and all down. And you're just like, come on. You're, you're, you're the average of the five people that you hang around yeah. with the most. And if, say, for example, you've got two or three business partners that are always negative, you're going to turn into a negative person. And, and to be honest, you might not think you are, but when you go outside of that circle and you go to like your friends or your family or whoever, they're going to be like, why is James being negative? Like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not it's not you that picks up, it's the others that pick up yeah, around yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's really important. And then also like the bad times make the good times better. Yeah, I think, for I think sure. We all need pain in our life. Yeah. Like, right? because it's the whole like the delta of happiness. What is happiness? So it's your perception of what you think should be, right? So if your perception's down here and the actual realization is here, that perception there is happiness. But, yeah, the percentages, but, yeah. But if you're thoughts are that it's going to be this good and it's this good then yeah. your perception your delta is sadness or unhappiness and you're moaning oh i had a better steak 
at this other place the other week and it's just like, was it a nice steak? Yeah, it was an amazing steak. Like some people in the world that aren't even eating, do you know what I mean? Like you go to South Africa and they're lucky to even have a meal. They might yeah. get a bowl of rice. So at that point, when you're actually realising, actually I'm in a very fortunate position, I've got a roof over my head, I've got clean water coming out of the tap, like, and you actually start to realise that you're fortunate and you don't have these such high expectations, if that's where realisation is, if you're here, then you're always going to be happy. I um, actually had this conversation with Gary, like literally two, three nights ago. And obviously he was on, he was in Dubai with us during lockdown. Yeah. And he's been to Cyprus with us. He's done a couple of Spain trips. He's done Thailand. He's been everywhere in the world. He's done Vegas with me a few weeks ago. And I said to him, I've noticed something. Every time I go away with like, when we went to Dubai, when we went, went to Vegas, when we went to Spain, I've come back saying, that's the best holiday I've ever been on. And it's not the place that we've been there. It's yeah, just yeah. the people that are around exactly. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've just surrounded myself with really good, enthusiastic, positive people. And I'm like, oh yeah, I definitely do business with James. I definitely do business with Scott. I definitely do business with Gary. I definitely do business with X, Y, and Z. And it's never just the location. Like we could literally be like five or six of us. We could go to a bar in Manchester or we could be out in Thailand partying yeah. and it would still be the best. You're with. It's not just, the, I mean, the location does help at times. If it's, if it's nice weather and it's nice yeah. beach and stuff like that, it does help slightly, but yeah, it's the people you're with. Like you can go on certain um, stag do's and stuff like that with the lads. And if you've not got the right people around you, it can, uh, mm, and it can be the best location in the world. But if you've not got lads that have banter and have a good time, then it's not, it's, the crack's not going to be there. It's not going to be as good. Yeah, definitely. So SEO events, we've obviously done Search Birmingham. We have done Estonia and Brighton SEO. Rate them one, two, three. Estonia number one, Birmingham number two, Brighton number three. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. I'd, I'd, well, I, I've done Vegas as well, so Vegas would be number three. Um, Vegas would be number two, actually. So Estonia, Vegas, Search Birmingham, and then Brighton SEO. Yeah. The, um, I thought Estonia was put together really well by Kyle and Carl. I think Search Birmingham was put together really well by Udish and Charles. Um, some good people turning up to both of them events. Didn't do the Vegas, um, but there's yeah. a lot of high level people that went there, so I'm sure it would have been good in Las Vegas. Is a, Amazing place to go. And Brighton, I was a little bit underwhelmed, but I met um, Keith Best and Mike Martin. Shared an Airbnb with them, so it was, uh, was going to have a catch up with them. I had uh, a good but, mastermind, really good mastermind with them, talking about yeah. ranking rents, local yeah. websites, more, more so on the local side of stuff, not, not on the affiliate side of stuff. But yeah, yeah super knowledgeable guys. Um, I like it because they implement, like, Keith, Keith's one of them that he, he's building a new site every single week, so yeah. he's, he's physically doing the work, he's not just talking, he's physically doing it, and he's like, oh, have you tried this, have you tried this, have you tried that, and it's like, you're just bouncing off each other, which is good, and Mike's proper entrepreneurial, so he's always got all these different kind of other business ideas, um, he's the thinker mm -hmm. um, in, in the business, and then Martin Johnson's the developer who, who implements like Texas ideas and puts it physically into code and creates the amazing SaaS tools. So they're both cool guys. Um, I enjoyed seeing them for sure. I think they're going to come up to Manchester in a few weeks. Yeah. Um, they're, yeah, they're, they're good guys. That'll be good. Um, so SEO Estonia, really well put together. The green screen, the green screen, green screen room for all the speakers with like the makeup and stuff like that felt like a little a beauty pageant getting makeup yeah, on and stuff is, though, now, you've, oh you've here that, we go here we go you've set. <laughs> rick's just been putting makeup on for this podcast i mean what's that all about now i've not Come got on, any, i've not got any makeup Mate, you have. Oh, all right yeah okay okay so that was That's that was really right, good um and then vegas vegas obviously you've got the likes of Craig Campbell, Chris Palmer, Clint Butler, Terry Samuels. That that's already stacked. Like a lot of knowledge was in that room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Steve Steetoff as well. Like, Phil Erno. Yeah. Top guy. 
Uh, uh, everyone from America was, I felt like, was in that room. Holly Starks. There's, there's definitely a lot more people that I'm missing yeah. off the, the list. Brian Ko. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a different event. It was more so tailored towards like black hat. But it's always good to understand like the black hat strategies, so you don't end up messing up on your website as well. Because some of the guys were like. Oh, you don't want to do this. Like, do don't touch this CTR tool, or don't do this with your PR. So it was it was good getting the insights from those yeah, guys. Yeah. Um, they, those guys do so much testing, yeah, so much good. testing. And then Search Birmingham, and the reason why Search Birmingham is number three, right? It would be number two, but I've never been to Vegas. And when we were in Birmingham, did you realize that the weather was shocking? Yeah, yeah. so bad. So that was number three. I uh, and also. I feel like that was my worst talk out of out of all of them. It's your first talk, though. So yeah, so it, gonna it was... Keep, like, like I said before about the guy who's an introvert that was to do for masterminds, if you started asking, oh, I'm not really certain what to do, it's my first talk. You didn't. I'm saying if you did, like, go and do it. Yeah. You're gonna, your first talk's going to be garbage, mm -hmm. right? Your second talk's going to be less garbage. Your third talk's going to be okay. Your fourth talk's going to get a bit better. Your fifth talk's going to be good. Your sixth talk's going to be really good. Seventh talk's going to be... You, if if you are storytelling, you're doing storytelling, everything like Carl Luth does and stuff like. But yeah. like you you find you find your angles and find who you are as a talker and and what pitch people like hearing. Mm -hmm. And you've just got to throw yourself in the deep end and do it. Yeah, definitely. What's one fit? So you've attended every single one of my talks from Search Birmingham. The only two that you've not done is York affiliate gathering yeah. in Vegas. What's one thing that you think has improved over the talks? Your persona. Right. Okay. Um, how you deliver the, sometimes it's not the content that you deliver, it's how you deliver it. Mm -hmm. right. Kyle, Kyle always talks about this quite a lot. Like it's the storytelling and how you deliver, sometimes not the content that's within the, so they'll listen back, to, if they were thought, oh, I really like that talk, they'll probably listen back to the talk again. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, but if, if you've got this drone and tone of voice that's not engaging with the audience, people just will switch off. Yeah. yeah so yeah. You, your mannerisms on, on stage was great. Do you know what I mean? You came across mm -hmm. as that. This, I had this awe about you. And, and it's to do with confidence. It's to do with confidence in knowing that what you're talking about as well, that if someone in the audience asked you a question and called, Kaz, that's bullshit, you got data to say, no, it's not because of X, Y, and Z. If you didn't have that data and you went on stage and the stuff you was talking about, you didn't believe in and you couldn't defend yourself, I'd be worried for you. Yeah, yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. but you're that confident now because you know and you can back it up. And not only that, that if someone does ask you a question that you're not certain about, that you've not spoken about, you've got that attitude now to say, mm, do you know what, I'm not certain about that, but I know someone who will know the answer to it, I'll get back to you. So some people are too proud to think that they need to know everything, and you don't. Like, you don't need to be an electrician, a joiner, a plumber, bricklayer, a bricklayer, yeah. roofer to build you out. You just need to know who is the best bricklayer, who is the best plumber, who is the best roofer, and combine it all together as a project manager, mm -hmm. and you build a nice house. Yeah. So now knowing that, and now you, that you know the bits to it, and you're the glue in in the situation and pulling all these people together, you're almost like the puppet master. Yeah, definitely. So, you, yeah. You've, I feel like you've said this before, SEO's just been a really good project manager. It is, of course it is, yeah. Uh -huh. Like, you, you can't have someone who's, who's all around good at SEO because the people who write content generally won't be good at doing links because people who write content because just so everyone knows he's been splat slamming his hands on the desk and i told him before the podcast don't slam your debt your hands because it's gonna it's gonna mess up the audio <laughs> stop that right the, um but people who are good at links specifically aren't good at content yeah content uh people that are creative in the way that they write content and stuff like that generally link builders are more data driven spreadsheets stuff like that so for that reason, graphic design is completely different to being someone that enjoys doing links, more creative and stuff. So you need to be able to know where can I order videography from, a, yeah. vid a videographer from to do the videos, graphic designer to do your images or your infographics or your logos, where to get your content written from, who's going to geek out on the content to re-optimize it and improve upon it, um, who's going to do your backlinks. Yeah. So you don't need to be a jack of all trades. 
Yeah, definitely. So I think it's time now, unless you've got anything else to add. No, I'm done. Right, so we're going to play a game. Am I lying, it's called. So the rules of this game is I have got four slips. I'm going to pick one. Yep. It's either a true or a lie. And you get to essentially ask me some questions. Right. And then you need to come to the conclusion of if I am lying to you or if I am telling the truth. Right, okay. I have not seen these. I actually got Dan in our office to write all of them. So it'll be interesting to see what he has come up with. I feel like he's... He knows all of our darkest secrets. So I fell in love at an SEO conference. Obviously now you right, essentially okay. asked me some questions. So what SEO conference was that? Can I say that, that it's happened multiple times? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a really outgoing, loving guy. You is, all right, ones, okay, right? It's, it's, it's SEO Estonia and also vegas as well right hang on a minute you said you fell in love you fell in love at both the events both the events bearing in mind guys it was like one week after each other was it the same guy <laughs> <laughs> no right was it right so was it the same person no it was two different girls right girls Right, okay. Why do you I, seem? I based my decision. <laughs> why do you, why do you <laughs> seem so, so surprised? So, I think that it is definitely. So, welcome to the first episode of the DDD podcast. We were looking at some stats, 63% of you guys aren't subscribed, so make sure to hit the subscribe button down below as it'll help the YouTube algorithm. 